dear friends, dear members, welcome once again to the 12th PNI conference. As you all know, the Paris Learning Club has a very long history in organizing this conference, right before the renewals. This year's renewals being more of a re-rating instead of a renewal. For those of us who started the negotiations and are not very happy with what's happening, um, a lot of things in the uh, mutual insurance industry happening which are of great importance to us, the users, members, mutual members, and owners of the clubs. Um, I'd like to thank Mrs. Prevezano for organizing the seminar once again. Luca Lightis for once again taking time out of his busy schedule for chairing the seminar. And of course, all the clubs who are participating. The Guard, Swedish Club, the American Club, UK Club, Bill Bros and School, North of England. All the clubs that were invited and did not choose to attend as members of the panel and those who chose to attend as members of the audience. We will, uh, this year we will do debates. We did this a few years ago as a trial and it was uh, quite successful. Um, the clubs will be debating with each other. This does not necessarily mean that what they will be debating for is what they believe in, which I think is the most interesting part. Uh, and the audience will be the one that decides who has won the debate by a show of hands or by loud screams and shouts. Um, and I hope that uh, the broken community that serves the owners and the only management community which is here is larger than the rest of you, so our side can win. Um, we will be having commentary on the debates, um, hopefully just to make it a bit more difficult and make it interesting. Um, and with that, I would like to um, ask Maria to and Luko Lakish to uh, start off the uh, conference. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would also like to thank you all for being here today, this very busy time of the year, and for making this event uh, possible. This year's seminar takes place at a time where it is very challenging for both clubs and owners. On the one hand, owners are operating in a freight market that barely enables them to cover their operating costs, and on top have to deal with banks who are seeking to apply drastic measures so as to secure their mortgages. On the other hand, the churn effect has heavily struck clubs this year, leaving them with newer tonnage which generates slim premium. The problem is aggravated further as both the number of large-scale claims below clubs' retention and pool claims are rapidly increasing at a time when clubs are required to operate in a stricter regulatory environment. <coughs> this has led clubs to look for hefty increases and in re-rating of vessels, with their members vigorously resisting the same, not forgetting the icing on the cake the recent heavy RI increases which were advised. The current state of affairs reminds us of a game of chess, where both sides focus on victory and carefully make their moves. Unfortunately, should both sides remain adamant, then there will be no winners, but only losers, as the result, as the result would be disastrous for the uh, system. A compromise should be sought in order to find a solution somewhere in the middle, as this would be in the best interest of all parties concerned. One wonders, though, is this the year that the clubs should use their free reserves? I hope that this seminar will meet your expectations. Thank you for attending once again, and I will hand you over to Mr. Chairman. Again, welcome to this uh, 12th conference, uh, which has been organized by Maria, and uh, hopefully will be interesting and informative. As uh, George mentioned, uh, each of the participants will not actually uh, be giving their views. It's, uh, it's a creative debate, debate and uh, it's very sporting them to do it. From my point of view, I have never really understood why there's a need for general increases, except to help the underwriters by creating a false target. 
as the majority of clubs have continued pure underwriting losses, the principle of general increase doesn't seem to work. But I'll allow uh, you to decide uh, who is the first argument. Uh, so, to open, let me introduce Rolf Robson of the Guard. And uh, the question is, this house believes that the annual levy by clubs of the general increase on premium has become a statistically unsupportable expedient, more honored in the breach than in the observance. Is it reasonable for the clubs to impose such high increase at the time when the market has such dire prospects? I'll allow you to decide. <coughs> Actually, 
a transparent way of communicating to your members that this is actually the same as our club. This is, this is what we need to do together to meet targets in the future. Let's first look at the planning inflation. This graph shows the development of the size of the average planning guard for the last 10 years. The red line shows the three years average, the gray line shows the one year average. As you will see, in 10 years, the average claim for PNI in God, which I think is quite representative with the market as we have a fairly large market share of 15%, it has increased from $25,000 in average to $70,000 in average in 10 years. That is, that is uh, a fact, and I think that also counter this introduction that this is actually why we need increases in premiums. That's what's going on. If we don't get uh, premiums in to pay the claims, where will we end up? If you look at the three years average, naturally it's a little bit more balanced picture, but still an increase from thirty to fifty thousand dollars in ten years. So it has been quite a big claims inflation over the last ten years. So I think uh, uh, if you compare that to the general increases, it, it's actually quite a, quite a similar picture. This shows uh, four clubs. It would be a little bit too messy to bring all the clubs, but I have here all the clubs having had the lowest general increases of the last 10 years, and the club having had the highest, and also a couple of years. As you can see, the club with the lowest general increase have had an overall increase of 78% of the last 10 years, starting with the index 100 in 2003, while the most expensive club have had an increase of 175%. So there is a great variety, but the shape of the curves are quite similar. And if you remember from, the, from this, uh, um, from this one, there is a peak here, and there is a peak here, on the planks without a And that has actually been very much reflected in the general increases of the clubs. So it seems that the general increases of the clubs very much serve to adjust for claims inflation. So I think we can tick off the first box. General increases work for the purpose of adjusting for claims inflation. Let's have a look at the unbroken results over time for the group. This is showing the combined grades of net for the entire international group, third year from 2007 and up until today. 126% combined grades of net means that the clubs in 2007 they lost 26 cents for each dollar they got in in premium. And if you remember back on the on the claims development, you saw a steep increase in the claims in 2007. That led to a bad result for the clubs. The response was a general increase, fairly high general increase compared to the average for the for the years 2007 and 2008. And this brought the underwriting result back in balance. balance. Did, did we charge too much? Groups actually, uh, like the clubs, overall charged more or less the correct figure in those days of years. Because since that, the underwriting result has balanced between 95 and 107 percent, which is basically balancing the break-even. <coughs> so I take a bit of also ticking off the other box. Yes, general increase serves as a good tool to bring back sustainable uh, underwriting results in challenging times. And the clubs don't seem to overdo it actually. Overall, as a group, it seems to be quite right. Then let's move to the last purpose, which I think is important, because we are all mutuals. We should have transparency in our clubs, and you should know the background and all the details in your club. Uh, I have made an analysis of uh, the last two full policy years, 2010 and 2011, but uh, the two full policy years where all the clubs have already released their accounts. I have looked at the general increase uh, for those two years together, that is the black uh, bars. And I've also looked at how has the average rate per GT developed in the clubs during the same period. Uh, I think it's reasonable that the average rate per GT develops slightly less than the general increase. The background is that the world fleet is developing, old small ships are being uh, scrapped, new, nice big ships are coming in. 
certainly if you uh, uh, sell three hand old handy sized bulkers and replace it by one new cake, that your average rate per GP will be lower. And that is, so it's a natural trend that there will be a slight difference between the general increase and the development of the rate per GP. But there is really big differences between the clubs. I here only brought in six clubs, numbered from A to F, and you can see here that <coughs> Club A had zero general increase. During the same period, these two years, the average rate per GT was reduced by 6.3%. Club B had a general increase of 5%. In average, the rate was reduced by 2.6%. And Club C had a general increase of 6.5% and had actually an increase in the rate of 4.9%. I think for those three examples, those three clubs, it seems to be a very reasonable development of the rate per GT compared to the uh, general increases they have had for those two years. So have they been transparent? Have they asked, told their members what we need and achieved it? I think we can conclude for, the, for those that, oh, oh, okay, a little question mark, I don't know the details behind everything here, because there are internal matters from the clubs, but I think it's okay. It looks like for those three clubs, there has been a great deal of transparency. <coughs> they have done exactly what they have told the members, gone up there, got the general increases, and then they have built on the fleet as well, added some new tonnage as a lower rate. What about these other clubs here, D, E, and N? They have all had a 10% general increase in total for those two years. But the average rate per GT has had the following development minus 10% for club B, minus 16.6% for club E, and minus 17.9% for club F. So despite higher general increases in those years than they are showing the group, they have a big, big reduction in the rate per GT. So my question to you is, have all clubs been transparent in respect of their general increases, and that is what they actually need? If I were a member, I think I would have asked them, what have you done here? How have are you paying 10% increase for a break-even loss rate for this club? Then it looks like somebody else, somebody else has got a better treatment. Maybe there's not been a great deal of transparency in respect of the premium policy in this club. So to conclude, I think general increase, if used in the right way, is a good tool for the clubs. Because you're, we are mutuals, we need to adjust for tense inflation, we need to get the underwriting results right over time, whether it is a good tool to, uh, in the mutual to show transparency, it's a question mark. In some clubs it seems to be, in others it's, it's a big question. The only group which can do something about this is actually you. You are the board members of the club, you are the ship owners, deciding on your renewal agreements. You can challenge your clubs to make them transparent. That concludes my presentation. Actually, Rolf, I didn't actually uh, say we shouldn't have general increases. I just said that we were just helping you guys do the underwriting for you. Slightly different. <laughs> so, and now against the motion, George Nielsen of the Swedish Club. <laughs>
it is the board and it is the owners of the club who decide whether or not to have a debtor increase and what the debtor increase is going to be. Projections of claims also go into to the uh, level of uh, general increases. <coughs> All of these things uh, they result in a budget and a forecast. Um, that depending on the budget and the forecast, we, we accept general increases. Uh, now we're going to crunch some numbers. <coughs> Here are the uh, general increases for the last uh, six years. And uh, you see that in 2008 and 2009 they were quite high. Uh, reason for that was uh, quite a lot of claims in 2006 and 2007, and then we had a very bad uh, financial year, and uh, the clubs rely uh, quite a lot on investment income. Most of the time, uh, the majority of the, the clubs, uh, just like uh, Rolf Toro has said, they're um, underwriting with a deficit, and uh, we need uh, the investment income to make up for some of the losses we make on the insurance side. Last three years, been moderate increases. This year, for some clubs, moderate increases. For some other clubs, slightly higher increases. <coughs> but if we look at how general, uh, how average premiums per GT <coughs> have developed between 2007 and 2012, we see a slightly different picture, actually. <coughs> we see that there's only one club that has significantly increase its average premium per GT, and that's the Japan Club. But they came from extremely low levels. We have a few other clubs uh, that uh, had similar uh, average premiums per GT um, uh, in 2012 compared to 2007. Uh, uh, and uh, some of them, I think ship owners is a slightly uh, stronger case. So they insure a lot of smaller ships, so they can really not be compared to the others. But um, there are other clubs who have not uh, reduced uh, the, the premium, the average premium per GT as much as others, but they also came from very low levels. There are some other clubs who <coughs> have reduced the premiums per GT quite a lot. So you cannot say that, that uh, the clubs are charging too much. Of course, we see that there's a lot of older tonnage that has been phased out, and a lot of new large tonnage that have come in. But at the end of the day, uh, overall, the average premium per GT has been down quite a bit. And here you see uh, a slide on what the average premium per GT in at the end of 2012 was. And uh, you see ship owners, they stand out on the high side. But uh, your clubs at the, the bottom, they're actually the clubs who have the highest general increases this year. And then you have a big pack in the middle. You have some clubs that are charging slightly higher. Uh, some have kind of different exposures than others. In American clubs, they have a lot of uh, exposures to uh, American liabilities. And uh, some of the others have a lot of cruise vessels. So that may explain why they're slightly more expensive. <coughs> also, an analysis here uh, of uh, the growth in GT compared to the growth in the overall premium. And you see that for most clubs, uh, the growth in GT has uh, <coughs> ran away from the growth in premiums. Uh, some clubs have uh, grown tremendously, and uh, their premium base has grown as, as well, but uh, not as, as, uh, as much as uh, the growth in GTs. Look at free reserves. <coughs> free reserves uh, have uh, developed. This is free reserves per GT, and uh, they have uh, developed very differently for the clubs in this uh, period. Some clubs they have uh, added on to the free reserves per GT uh, quite a bit. Uh, reasons for that: some came from very low levels, other ones came from higher levels. We have three clubs with lower. Uh, free reserves per GT, and we have uh, most of the clubs they have a uh, higher free reserves per GT. Uh, this line here is some imaginary inflation. It's, it uh, shows inflation of uh, two percent per year. Free reserves per GT. Um, 
if we discount ship owners, we see that there are five clubs with pay reserves per uh, city over four dollars. And then we have a band of clubs just below four dollars. And then we have a couple of clubs with slightly lower pay uh, reserves per city. Uh, if you look at combined ratios uh, over this uh, seven year period, you see that there are only two clubs that have actually been underwriting profit, uh, profit with profits uh, in the last seven years, and that's uh, school and shipowners. Uh, the other clubs have actually been losing money, uh, uh, whereas they've been able to make up for some of this uh, from investment income from their investments. So at the end of the day, um, why should we get the general increase? Well, I think it's a good measuring stick or a point of reference for members. Uh, just like uh, Rob Torres said, it addresses claims inflation. And it uh, actually allows the boards to keep checks and balances on the management. And it safeguards the financial obligations being met and the survival of the club. And I think that uh, even in a world without the general increases, we would be looking and talking about the same issues as we're talking about now. Are the clubs charging too much? Should they be more considerate uh, towards the ship owners? Uh, but the general increases are clubs. Uh, in, the general increases are the clubs' way of being transparent and a way for us to treat our members in a fair and equal way. And uh, you know, it's actually up to the boards of the clubs to decide whether or not we should have the different <coughs> increases as we have them and set the level. And uh, the boards of the club, there are ship owners on the board, so they are the ones to decide. And there was also a question. Is it reasonable for the clubs to impose such high increases at a time when the market has such dire prospects? And uh, we'll see number one. Uh, are the increases high? Well, historically, I think we really saw this before, no, the increases are not high. Are the increases high giving the shipping market? Well, you know, I think any increases of any cost whatsoever in today's shipping market is bad news for ship owners. So if you look from the ship owner's perspective, it's uh, any additional cost is bad news. Are the increases high when looking at claims? Well, you saw the, the, the graphs from the Lord Tora and uh, how claims have increased in the last few years. Also seen in the last two years, a lot of really, really big claims. And these claims, they have to be paid by the clubs. And they have to be paid by the mutual membership of the clubs. Not one individual ship owner will be able to pay for these claims itself. They have to be distributed amongst the membership. And if we look at uh, an average premium and we look at what we pay uh, in uh, reinsurance costs, as much as 40-60% of the average premium uh, for, for clubs, depending a bit on, on uh, what the average premium is, actually goes to uh, RI costs and pool costs. So what's left over to pay uh, claims within the retention is uh, actually not that much. Are the increases higher when looking at premiums? Well, you saw the, how average premium per GT has gone down. Are the increases higher when looking at exposures and uh, liabilities in the next few years? You know, there is a horde of new legislation that will take effect in the next few years that will just increase liabilities on ship owners and that will mean that we have to pay more in claims. Claims are just going to become more expensive in the years to come. This is how we're looking at free reserves. Difficult one. Um, for some, maybe. For others, no. And uh, it's actually up to the boards of the clubs to set targets on free reserves for the clubs and then decide upon uh, if uh, some of the <coughs> losses that the clubs are making should be taken out of the free reserves or if it's going to be made up for by general increases. Uh, so, is it reasonable for the clubs to impose such high increases at the time when the market has such dire prospects? 
uh, in our view, uh, we have more no's than yes. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, we think that for the loss part, uh, the P9 increase for 2000, 2013 or 14 seem to be quite reasonable. And uh, I'm sure that the people that sit on the boards of uh, the international group clubs, they will not let the management of the clubs ask for more money than they need. So we're in a difficult predicament, uh, both for the clubs and uh, for, for the owners. It would be nice to be a magician, pull out your hat and start pulling out dollar bills uh, and not have any dinner increases. However, unfortunately, we are not magicians. Uh, we haven't found uh, the perfect recipe for doing this. We're actually hard at work for our members when they have big casualties that uh, uh, you need for us to attend to. We are there physically, we're there servicing you, and at the end of the day, we're also there to pay for all the costs that you have. <coughs> Thank you very much. I'll just ask uh, Vasilis uh, to come in first, if you don't mind. Uh, you can, yes, if you like to go. But I will just make a few comments. First of all, the boards meet two or three times a year. It's almost impossible for them to dictate to the management on these increases. I mean, when you meet and somebody's telling you that uh, we've got these immense losses, then uh, how are you going to vote that this not to be an increase? I mean, it's just impossible. The other point I don't quite understand is we had a reduction of the average premium for GT. They've all come down. How does this correlate with the underwriting losses? Some owners must be paying far more than others. I understand the churn effect, but clearly it's not a fair playing field. Sorry, if I see it, please do. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to make a, two points of my own before commenting on what we, we just heard. Uh, the first comment is regarding the actual uh, issue of the general increase. Um, I personally see the general increase more like a market-based mechanism, MBM, as it's known in the industry, from which uh, individual uh, members are then charged an increase or a decrease. Uh, depending on the record. So I think the actual point of the general increase is more of a reference point rather than an actual policy, a tool used to collect uh, more premium. Uh, I think that we all agree that a general increase has never ever been met, the general increase target has never been met by a club. It's, either, it's usually as a lower number, a lower percentage than what uh, the boards are uh, targeting. So that's my my uh, comment on the first part of the, uh, the, uh, of the topic. The second part is uh, whether this is a reasonable uh, time to ask for general increase. Unfortunately, it isn't, but the bottom line is that, uh, you know, I think that most of the clubs missed their opportunity to charge the proper premiums when the markets were doing very well. And unfortunately, like banks, they were just, uh, you know, uh, competing against each other. Who's going to give the lowest premium in order to attract all these lovely, large, new building tonnage, which was and still is coming onto the market. And despite the churn effect that is being used as an excuse over the past two years for uh, the decrease in income, as, as you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, noted a while ago, uh, the, the bottom line is that the actual world fleet is increasing, it, and it's obviously increasing with new buildings, and uh, larger modern ships that theoretically and practically carry a lower risk profile than the older tonnage. Therefore, going forward, we're going to be faced with a larger world fleet, which is almost double what it was six or seven years ago. So we're not really talking about an increase, we're talking about a, really about a doubling of the world tonnage. So at the end of the day, I think that the, the clubs really need to look hard at the new profile of the world fleet, they, uh, both gentlemen uh, who spoke earlier uh, mentioned larger modern ships, and usually larger and more modern ships carry historically uh, a smaller number of claims. 
than the smaller ships and the older ships. So we really need to understand how can a general increase, despite the inflation uh, that was me that was mentioned, and which is a, which is a, an issue. No one mentioned anything about investment income, and investment income is there to supplement usually a shortfall in underwriting. So I think these are two points that uh, should be addressed uh, by the speakers, and obviously by George, who's going to uh, also comment. Thank you. You're right, three or four times a year for a board is not enough to uh, create policy. Boards need to be a bit more proactive and they need to be involved, or rather the members need to be more involved in the management of the clubs. At the end of the day, there are our clubs and the managers are there because we said they should be there. Uh, and this is a theme, a recurring theme in these PMI conferences. Uh, general increases should only be considered as a uh, kind of a, a direction, simple <coughs> decision, not more than that. At the end of the day, it's everybody's individual record that will make a difference. Um, the numbers that we've seen up here from both, uh, in both presentations show that uh, per GT income goes down and up regardless of general increases. Free reserves go up and down regardless of that because that is a result of what the makeup of the club is, what the particular claims were, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, what the investment income was and what have you. So it's not really the point. As far as general increases are concerned, in a very tough market, which we have been through for the past few years and unfortunately looks like for the next couple of years at least, uh, for sure this year. Uh, and I, in my opening speech I uh, referred to a review which is more re-rating in certain instances. Uh, it doesn't matter what general increases, it doesn't matter if the club decided 5, 10, 15 or 105 percent. At the end of the day, if the club is re-rating you because of your record or because of their financial position, the general increase is just as I said, the direction. I think, um, uh, for me, the, uh, the answer to all these things is a much more proactive and much more involved uh, stance by the members and those who sit on the boards and the committees. Um, certain clubs have that, certain don't. I would definitely be the one siding with those who have it and who try and get more involved and understand better what is happening in their club, and understand better how investment income is generated, understand better how free reserves are generated, understand better how renewals are negotiated. Uh, as far as the uh, you know, statistics show that we are going towards larger and more modern ships, and naturally a per GT income will go down there. How this will affect the market, as Vasily said, I think the next few years will show when we expect, I think as a whole, a large amount of older vessels to be removed from the market, with 2011-2012 uh, being record years in demolition, and 2015 probably at the same levels, and uh, the completion of a very large round of new building orders entering into the market. Thank you. Fine. Uh, would the panel like to answer any of the comments? Yeah. Please. Is this working? Yeah. yeah. Very good. Uh, just a few comments to uh, to um, to the comments. Bakalitsas, <laughs> uh, you said that uh, clubs are maybe meeting a general increase. I can just confirm that uh, at least the club I know best uh, have met the target the last 10 renewals. It is uh, closely followed up by the board. Uh, first of all, they are setting the target for the renewal prior to the renewal, and then in the first board meeting after the, the renewal, there's a thorough uh, 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 analysis of the results from the renewal. And uh, I'm happy to confirm that for the last 10 renewals, the target has been reached. Uh, I'm sure that's uh, also the case with other clubs, because when you saw my analysis, there are actually some clubs which even have a smaller gap than God between the general increase and the development of the tonnage. So I would expect those clubs also to reach the target. So at least those three clubs which were up on the screen there on the left-hand side of the slides must have reached the target. Uh, regarding investment, I also comment on this. Yep. <coughs> uh, I, I think it's interesting to hear that uh, uh, many people they want the, the clubs to adhere to the general increases, and uh, they want uh, the targets that are set by by the board to be uh, fulfilled at, at uh, after the renewals. And uh, we have also uh, 
delivered uh, the gamma increase to the board. Uh, same thing goes for, for the Swedish club. We have to deliver a certain number to the board. Uh, but when we are out talking to our members, that is not what they want to hear. You know, they want, of course, uh, individually, they all want uh, better treatment than the gamma increase. Nobody wants to pay more. However, we are asked by the board to deliver a certain amount of money. So although we hear that the clubs need to get the general increase, uh, we also hear on the other side that, that uh, the, the members want flexibility, but it's very difficult to combine the two. If we are going to get the general increase that the board has in trust, we need to be very firm. But I think uh, for the most part, we are firm, and uh, <coughs> members with <coughs> good records, they get a slight uh, decrease, and uh, the members with, uh, with uh, bad records, they get a bit more. But at the end of the day, we have to deliver a number to the board. Mm. Uh, I, I would also like to comment uh, upon two other uh, points I made. One is the investment income, and uh, certainly uh, you are right. The investment income is a very important part of, uh, of the income of the clubs. Uh, it shall subsidize the underwriting deficit, and it has done all the time. Unfortunately, we are, for the time being, in a very low interest environment, and we cannot expect the same fueling from the investment return of the next five years than we have, for instance, in the period between 2000 and 2007. That's just uh, a fact, and that has also to be reflected in the premium. So <coughs> if the clubs should meet the regulatory requirements, we also have to lift the bar slightly when it comes to the uh, target for the technical and writing results. We cannot live with a 115, 120 combined rates on that term. It has to be closer to 100 these days with the current interest in and, and finally, just uh, regarding the, the, uh, the number of board meetings, I think uh, that is very different from club to club. Some clubs have a uh, two board system where they actually have a, an executive board uh, appointed by the board, which meets on a much more regular basis than two or three times a year. Uh, at least I know uh, certain clubs uh, having meetings up to six times a year. So it's, that varies from clubs. Yeah, <coughs> that's true. But I mean, uh, it's difficult for sort of a five, six man committee to represent the uh, board of 30 people, you know, and their views. On the investment side, you're correct, but I mean, that again is being created by the Solvency 2 requirements so that we can't invest really in uh, too much equity or too much possible uh, factors that may increase the investment return. So we're within these sort of two to three percent return levels, which actually equates on premium uh, terms to about nine percent because generally the reserves are three times the. Uh, amount of premium income so you can multiply it by three as an example. So it should, it should help, uh, and it certainly did help in the old days. But again, I, you know, with everything you said, you know, everyone's meeting their general increases targets, yet the average uh, premium for GT is coming down, so it means that the new people coming to the club must be paying far less than the old people and therefore the churn effect is going to take over. I mean, by definition, it must be correct. I think uh, that when, when you look at the premiums, uh, how it develops during the year, the premiums are, the average premium per GT is always the highest on the 21st of February every year. And then when there is <coughs> scrapping and, and uh, new vessels attaching during the year, it, it uh, goes down. <coughs> And that's a uh, reality, and uh, you know, we are asked to be competitive when crafting on uh, new vessels, and I think the clubs are competitive. And on one hand, uh, we're asked to charge as low premiums as possible, and then on the other hand, we're not asked to increase premiums at all. And it's a very difficult equation to get to add up. Yeah, and I think if you have a mixed fleet of old and modern, then probably it's reasonably fair because uh, it works out. Because if there's somebody with just an old fleet, then at the end of the day, he's getting uh, killed every year by the general increases, which he may actually be 
participating in a positive way to the overall future of the club. Um, yeah. Of course. Yeah, but we've all seen that it's not necessarily the oceans that make the claims. I mean, some of the big claims are by fairly modern ships. And certainly now on the reinsurance aspect, we're paying uh, quite considerably for fairly modern ship claims. Uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. I thought the market is, <coughs> to an effect, is, uh, is, a, is a big factor. But it's also important for, for the ship owners to, to be aware, and I, I'm sure you are, that there are very different underwriting strategies between clubs. Some are more stable in the premium development, uh, and they buy they have a uh, smaller churn effect. All the clubs have a different strategy, being very cheap on, on the tonnage, and they buy getting a, uh, a higher churn effect. Both strategies can be successful in the market, but it's two fundamentally different underwriting strategies. Yeah. So we're going and, to and then just also one comment: yeah. when you look at the rate for GT, some clubs have actually reduced their deferred call of the last few years, and that, when looking at the accounts, that of course have a, a big impact on the on the rate for GT in 2007, which was the starting year. In in Tor's presentation, all clubs uh, or no no clubs reduced their deferred call due to the financial crisis, but uh, but for later years, at least some clubs. Have. Okay. The floor. Any questions or any comments? Yeah. My name is Rupas, I'm the manager of CP Company, and I would like to put the following questions. Uh, asking for an increase, it means that you are have less problem. Is it so? Then. If you have less profit, what you have done to cope with the claims? Are these from the accidents? Are the accidents more? Have you utilized the reserve you have on putting in commodities or another thing? So you have from there? Because now, as you know, it is the time the owners they don't have much earnings. Uh, I have not seen anything of this, let's say, if you present the premium per cross stone and how much it was increased and how much is for the new and the, and the old. Now, we have seen some accidents which you pay much more money and have not to do with old or with the new ships. We see the last cruiser in Italy. We see the other two vessels that they run aground on rigs. What is the difference if it is an old ship or a new ship? If it was a new ship, it is a more expensive. So you are claiming you have to pay more. This is a question I have to listen from you. Yeah. Thank you. Can, can I also answer, answer that? Uh, it's, uh, for me, it's more a matter of the number of ships than old or new ships. But uh, when we see the structure change in the world fleet, it is the small, older ships going out, replaced by fewer new ships. So if you have three handy sized vessels, it's a bigger chance for a grounding than if you have one cape size. It's more to do with the size and the number of ships than the actual age when it comes to navigational planes. Yes, but you have now the figures. How many are the small ships and how many are the big ships and how much is what you have paid? Uh, just, uh, th this is a little bit on the, from the back of my head, but uh, as far as I can recall, just looking at the average size of the shipping guard, it has developed the last 12 years from approximately 14,000 gross ton per ship to 20,000 gross ton per ship. So there has been a dramatic increase in the average size of the vessels uh, for the last 12 years. And, uh, and that is a, so, so it's a natural consequence of that, that the average rate per GT goes somewhat down. <coughs> so let's say the accident, the claims are the need for you to make a Is it so? Yeah. Uh, if, if, if you remember the two slides I shown with, that, with the results of the international group in total for the last four years, the underwriting result has been actually quite stable. It has balanced around uh, just just about 100 percent. So the reason now for a general increase is the claims inflation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but I mean, I'll come to Mickey in a minute, but I mean, at the end of the day, there's still this question of whether we should use, to a certain extent, the reserves that we have. 
I mean, the reserves don't forget are usually sort of controlled by solvency two, but solvency two has been delayed quite considerably. We're all controlled by the sort of S and P results and what they're telling us, but. There's clearly most of the clubs, as, as you pointed out, have uh, more reserves than they need for solvency. So they could actually, at this particular time, use some of the reserves, if they show them. Uh, that, that, that's right. And uh, for instance, what, what uh, the Board of Guard has done is they have set an upper target for the free reserves. If that is exceeded, money will automatically be paid back to the members. During the last three policy years, we have all together uh, re returned 80 million dollars to the members as a reduced uh, as a reduction in the in the full installment of the premium. So we uh, we have actually set a target. If it exceeds, money will be returned. And please also remember that uh, when we had the financial crisis back in 2008, basically all clubs really made use of their free reserves. Some clubs uh, reduced the free reserves significantly. A few clubs asked for additional calls. But uh, that was uh, an example of the area where, where, where we really use the free reserves, and there needs to be a certain buffer to meet those kinds of really special, special yes, as well. <coughs> yeah. I'd like to add uh, one, one, one more thing when it comes to uh, the shipping market. We can't forget that uh, after the Olympics in, in China, uh, that's when uh, the downturn of the market happened. And uh, the end of 2008 and the beginning of 2009, they were was very bad times compared to what, what they were. And I think uh, the boards of the clubs have since then you know, really tried to see <coughs> increases at a minimum. And I think that the clubs have done what they can to, to support the members. However, <coughs> you know, we are uh, quite a few years down the line now, and, and uh, the premium base uh, has been eroded to a certain extent, and uh, the claims are on the rights, and it's, uh, I think, certainly one of the reasons why some of the clubs have to ask for a bit more money this year. Yeah, well, obviously you need to do some re-rating uh, generally, but because certainly from uh, my company prospect, because we're involved in lots of uh, different types of uh, financial deals, we do see a lot of other people's uh, premiums that they're paying. And we can see vast differences in different companies with the same ships. And this can't be right, so there has to be a general re-rating somewhere along the line, and the underwriters have to do it because... Uh, you know, may well work out to my detriment. Maybe we're actually taking advantage of this, which in most cases we are. But overall, there has to be some type of re-rating so that it's, uh, it's fair across the board, especially for the smaller owner today who is in a much worse situation than some of the others. Sorry, Mickey, you wanted to say something? Uh, yes, Mickey Kabaitis. I'm a naval architect. Uh, uh, we help build them, run them, repair them. And every now and then we deal with the insurance and the club uh, fraternity. In the old days, uh, captains of ships could deal locally with the receivers, stevedores, port authorities, builders, repairers, salvers, and so on. Then came the age of the superintendent. The superintendent got on a plane, went to far off places to help the captain and deal again with all these um, local people. Then came the era of everything being done at headquarters. So my point is that perhaps we should go back to the grassroots and go back a little bit closer to the ships. Quite a lot of these problems can be resolved locally, which means that there would be fewer claims, there will be less output, and therefore less input. So back to the ships. I think we should get closer to the ships and try to resolve problems locally. Thank you. Yeah, I think probably you could do that, Mickey, on the small planes, but on the big planes, they tend to be so sort of politically motivated as well. I'm sure the clubs would agree. But it's totally out of their control half the time. It's because the way sensible maybe to scuttle a ship 
instead of removing it, as we've seen with this uh, passenger ship, I mean, uh, you know, it seems to be almost illogical that we should reach a billion dollars worth of claims from uh, from this one ship. So, yeah, but well, well, uh, that could be dealt with on a local level. But with all due respect, <laughs> with this specifically, with this claim, you hear people from television commenting. You hear people from the press commenting. You hear all sorts of clever dicks commenting. And I haven't heard from, let's say, a local technical man saying, let's do this, let's do that, let's do the other and save money. And everybody is talking about billions. Everybody is doing rules and regulations. <coughs> God knows where in Brussels. And nobody looks at what happens on board the ships and close to the ships. It's time for the shipping people to get up and lead the dance, which is led by all sorts of other people who are far away from the ships. slide you saw that uh, obviously um, distribution premium is not um, doesn't follow uh, the general increases uh, so but that has already been made. The other point on general increases uh, is insofar as there's members and members and ships and ships and different risks for each member. There's members who have made uh, money for the club and there's the other members who have uh, caused losses for the club. Um, from that point of view I don't think the general increase is a fair principle and maybe a more fair principle would be the average increase perhaps so that because it was said earlier that um, clubs ask for general increase but sometimes with better records they ask for um, <coughs> lower increases as general I don't think that's the case they usually ask for a general increase plus record if it was an average increase instead of a general increase then possibly there could be a better more fair distribution of the increase Insofar as the result is an underwriting result that we have to achieve, then that can be achieved through an average increase uh, to take into account good records and bad records, as opposed to a general increase plus records. Thank you. Although I do think an average increase and a general increase, more or less, is the same principle. I mean, I don't actually see a great difference. I mean, the idea is that we want to raise a certain amount of money, and uh, that's what they try to achieve. Well, they start with the general increase usually, plus records, whereas with an average increase, there should be uh, low increases and high increases to I'm achieve the same target. I always thought that the general increase is just uh, a marketing tool, as I see, you mentioned, that. Uh, helps the underwriter start the ball somewhere. So if you start with a 15%, you have your meeting and you start at 15% and then you negotiate from there up or down. And this is how it's been used to date. I'm not so sure that was the idea of a proper general meeting. For the Swedish talk, the general increase is an average increase. Uh, it's what uh, we are supposed to achieve on average. So there will be some people who pay a lot more, and other people will pay less. Uh, I, I think actually that's the, the case with, with most clubs, and that was also basically the definition I put on the, on the screen. So what we're talking about, about here is an average uh, increase, which is the to total target for the club. Um, I just also wanted to compliment uh, on the fact that uh, there certainly are, as both, both you and, and, and Lou, Lou said, there are differences in rating level between fairly similar and low risks in the market. But I just uh, I think it's worth mentioning that it's actually of the interest of each and every club to have a well-balanced portfolio. Not If you have one member paying that much and one member paying that little, which of them do you use as renewal? It's not that one paying too little, it's one paying too much. So we have all the interest to actually to have a balanced rate level in our club. And that is what we are working on every day. 
to, to have a, a, a good balance and for follow that all, uh, at all possible. So that's in, in every club's uh, own interest, actually, to have a well-balanced portfolio. Otherwise, we lose business at renewal. Mm -hmm. One more, one more, then we'll take a vote on it. I would like to say, in order to reduce your expenses, why you don't ask to contribute everybody takes part in the damage? We have big damages, and the damage starts from something lead, increases because of the fault of others who have nothing to do with the ship, and then the ship owner and the clubs have to pay. How many disasters do we have? United States, here in Spain, the vessel went in and sent it out from the port. <coughs> Is it a legal thing to be done? Why I have to pay for all of this, and not the harbor master or the state for this contribution that to be done? Thank you. We fully agree, and uh, if it was possible for, for the club to go after the local authorities, uh, we surely would, but uh, with the uh, legislation of hand, it's uh, very, very difficult, just about impossible. This is something that we have to think, the club is not to have you have men. Uh, I, I, I think it's uh, it's absolutely correct, and it's a challenge we have in the industry, uh, ship owners and clubs together, that we are more and more becoming political tools than actually solving our own problems, and that, that is a general challenge in the in the world today. I think we are asked to contribute uh, solving uh, sanctions, uh, whether it is Iran or Syria. We are asked to contribute to, to whatever other things that happens, and that's uh, that's a uh, Increase political risk, which is a threat to the world. Why not? You see, society is trusting people who have some position, and it has to be in the position to have the right decision, not for the failure of the to pay. I think the reality you can't do battle uh, where you're going to lose. I mean, uh, we can't, politically, we can't uh, take on the US. <laughs> Uh, we saw that uh, recently with uh, this whole waste of uh, the inquiry for three years. Time, money that was wasted, and there was nothing we could do about it other than to comply. So, I, mean, I don't think that uh, we, can, uh, we can do anything on the political side, which is going to get worse. Well, not bad. So, yeah, that's the problem. So, I mean, shall we take... Uh, a vote? Yes, why not? Because while it's fresh in people's minds, I think that uh, we could take it. So, for, who's for the motion? Do I take your input against it? Do I have a show of hands for against the motion? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think that uh, obviously the against seems to have won. Okay. So, 